Uh, we're watching two twins up here. They're doing their dance. They're I like how to put the sheet over there so that the kids don't get spooked. That's always going to be Oh, that's probably why. Yeah. <laughs> Janelle Drayton here. Welcome to my Thanksgiving Day vlog. First of all, I'm quite sure you guys are wondering why does it look like I'm recording in a different part of the house? Well, it's true I'm recording in a different part of the house. I'm not recording in my room anymore because my brother is like sleeping to go to work and I don't want him to think I'm you know, being noisy and stuff like that. So being out here, it's like really good. This is probably the first time I'm going to be doing a vlog like this in which I narrate and I'll tell you the reason why. It has something to do with what happened the day before and the day of the Thanksgiving Day Parade and stuff like that. So the day before Thanksgiving what happened was I was backing up my voice memo files into iTunes. All the ones that were on my phone were replaced by the ones that was already in iTunes and I got so frustrated it took me literally two days to get it back. The, the day before the day of Thanksgiving and the day before Thanksgiving. The day of Thanksgiving I got up about two something hoping that I had everything I need and be able to bathe early and do my final run through and check to see if I got enough layers and all that stuff. Make sure my sneakers are outside so that I can just, when I'm ready to leave, I just grab them and go. And I had everything I need except for this camera. I couldn't take this camera with me because I heard that when you're participating in the parade, you're supposed to have like a, you could take whatever you want but don't take like a lot of bulky items so majority of the footage is you guys gonna see are from my iPhone 5s I left the house four o'clock yes by the time I got out I saw the Q5 like about maybe seven or six blocks away and I said oh no I hope you have another bus coming after this Waited like about 15-20 minutes in the cold and let me tell you how cold it was. It was about 20 something degrees out there. It's enough to burn your fingers and make you feel uncomfortable for a little while. So I saw the N4 pass and I knew I wasn't going to get on because they don't stop around Beasley America. Okay. So what I had to do, I didn't want to do it. I had to take dollar van. And what a dollar van is, is like one of those vans in Guyana or in the Caribbean where you pay like two dollars per person and yes it's cheap but I hate sticking out two dollar notes or bills just to give them and then I still gotta use my metro card when I hopped on the whole van smelled like weed and I said you know what I'm not gonna complain at least I got a ride so let me take this van take it all the way down to Jamaica Center Hop on the E, got on, got off at 34th Street. Wasn't so much people. It, it was fairly crowded, but wasn't so bad. It was running on like a Saturday schedule. By the time I got to 34th Street, I said, you know, I didn't eat anything before I left. And I didn't feel like the need to. So I decided that I was going to, ahead of time, stop at McDonald's. And when I got to the place, you guys, it was locked. I saw the doors barricaded, I was like, wait a second, is terrorists gonna try to invade a McDonald's? Like, what's going on? They should be open. When I peeped inside the door, there was like a manager waving his hand, like saying, no, 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 don't come in, right? And after the disappointment of not being able to eat a sausage, um, a sausage biscuit, I got to Manhattan Center. I was checked in by somebody well she said that she doesn't ha she didn't have my name in her list I told her my name and I provided the digital card on my phone and that's the thing that was new this year digital cards you could either print it which is like the old-fashioned way or which is new this year you could show it on your phone so I had it on my phone so you know I wasn't gonna print it out I don't I think my mom ran out of ink on the printer but it just didn't feel right for me to kill trees just to print out a little small thing like this anyway 
showed the ID, showed the card. She said that, okay, she doesn't have me on her list. So I had to go to some other lady on the other side. It wasn't so far away, but like maybe 12 steps away. And I showed her my ID and stuff. And she told me to go inside and go to the costumes and stuff like that. Take a costume, put them on and stuff like that. So when I got in, the place was huge. And I'm going to show you guys in this video how huge this place is. When I got there, I had to try to find where my teacher was because she's the captain. She is my former teacher for physics, my, f my former physics teacher. And I had to look for her and I was like, where is she? Where's the candy cane, you know, costumes? Where the at? And I looked around, looked around, and there was a lady that was carrying around a clipboard and she was asking people if they had trouble finding where they had to go so I told her okay I'm looking for the candy cane costumes and she told me to walk down straight and go all the way to the end not bad at least it wasn't between any between certain things and stuff like that Sorry. Okay. I made it. When I got there, Captain was really happy to see me. We talked for a long time. We caught up on a lot of stuff. I told her that I finished college and she was happy for me. She was telling me what was going on in St. John's Prep and I was very happy to hear that they added a lot of courses so that more students can be involved and exposed to different ki kinds of classes ahead of time so that when they go to college they have a firm grasp of what they what her what their intentions are to do after a little bit of chatting got to the um to the bathroom got in a stall took me like about 10 or 15 minutes to, to take off my sneakers and making sure that I can be able to get into my layers and then put on my costume. I had on a shirt sleeve, I had a thin long top, long sleeve top, and then I had a Christmas sweater. Then for the legs, I wore stockings, I wore a black and white checkered jogger, and on in, within the jogger I had leg warmers so I was good to go and yeah I had some cotton socks on and then I put on the costume this is a costume that I had and it's amazing it's very cute and my captain said the design on the vest is new this year and I was like wow I feel like I'm the guinea pig trying out this new vest the costume fit me really well and yeah it, it wasn't too snug the layers weren't so much that i couldn't fit all my clothes under the co costume i know there were people who slid some co coats under their costumes and that's because they have like a thinner layer so after like all the costume putting on i waited there for like 30 minutes no it was an hour i said I said to myself, wow, I'm not seeing anybody else for our team because I must have come extremely early. And that was the case. I got there about 5.30 a.m. We were supposed to be there before 6. Well, we were supposed to be there at least 6 o'clock, 6 a.m. By the time it was 6.30, it was like crazy packed. Um, then I got my pants hemmed so since I finished early my captain told me I can basically if I'm ready I can go out on the bus to 72nd Street and I was like bus where should I go where should I exit and I said to myself you know what 
I might as well wait till a few more people come and it, we can all go together. Here's the rest of the footage, starting from when I left Manhattan Center and heading to 2nd, 72nd Street with my candy cane group. Check it out. What's your name, uh? Janelle. Oh, Janelle, Donna. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Very good. I'm the one with the body crotch. <laughs> What? I can bring the big bird up. Oh, I gotta show you that. All these fabulous costumes are clowns and banner carriers and balloon handlers and assorted other volunteers are wearing. In 1969, Macy's Parade Studio was created in 69. That was 48 years ago. And they were created to bring in-house the design and construction of all the parade elements. Oh. And it was I got in. in a former two-year-old factory in right. Hoboken, New Jersey. Guys, we got to go around. In, huh? in 2011, the studio moved to a custom-designed, state-of-the-art facility in Munaki, New Jersey. Thank you, Mason. <laughs> She said she did cheating. Oh yeah, we can go over here. That's smart. So after 
recording the balloons and the floats and stuff like that we actually didn't go to the candy cane balloon we actually went to the deli to get something to eat i didn't want much but i said to myself you know what we're gonna be out here for a very long time i might as well get something to eat so i wanted a bag of chips and then when i was in the deli i realized that i forgot to bring my money somebody was so kind i think it was the lady with the glasses the white lady with the glasses she bought us snacks and stuff like that some people bought muffins some people bought bagels i didn't want anything big big you know because we'll be walking for a very long time even my english teacher who unfortunately couldn't be there because of the email that was supposed to be sent to her was um sent to spam she told me that i should not eat I know that that's my dad spitting. She told me to eat light. Anyway, about maybe 10 minutes after munching, my captain showed up. And she asked me how's everybody doing and stuff like that. And she even provided extra uh, toe warmers for us and hand warmers. Oh, by the way, I, did, I didn't get to tell you guys. She gave me a, like, a set of, I should say a couple. She gave me a couple of hand warmers and toe warmers. And while I was on the bus, I was trying to put on the toe warmers properly because it's supposed to go under your toes. I had trouble putting it on, but eventually I was able to put it on. But anyway, that thing gets extremely hot. It gets at least, how hot? Like about 85 degrees, it says, I believe. I may be wrong, but... So after the captain came, she told us, you know, we should start heading towards the balloon. And that's when we started heading towards the balloon. But before we did, we met up with our pilot, which was a white man. Anyway, so the pilot said to us, you know, where were you guys? Because there was a guy who was trying to take pictures and stuff like that. And we could have gone in a group. So he said, okay, let's go in a group. Let me get the group together. I'm going to go get the cameraman. And he wasn't that far off. When he was done taking the pictures for the people that was part of the Elf on the Shelf balloon, he came back to us and took pictures. And we had to come up with a, um, a chant before he showed up. So one of the chants was, Candy, candy, cane, cane. Candy, candy, cane, cane. After the picture was taken, we, we took position under the balloon. We had to grab a bone. And I wanted to be in the front, but somebody... There were people who took the front already, so I said, okay, you took it, I couldn't take it, so I had to be in the back. And I didn't like to be in the back, but, oh well. The candy cane is like a hook, so there was two in the front on the right side, there was two in the front on the left side. You have a person standing in the middle, and then you got two on in the back, and then another two on the back on the left side and the right side. So that's how their um, arrangement worked so before we walked we had to wait till all the balloons went by so when it was time for us to go we were told to you know get ready well we we were told to hold on to the bone and don't ever let go no matter what so we would give we were given instructions sorry for the weird angle but I'm gonna show you some of the signals he's been doing He's been telling us to do something like this when, and then go like that to go up. That means to wind up. So he would tell you, okay, we're going to wind up like like two times or three times. And he, he would tell us one, two, three, and he would blow the whistle. So we were all almost all the way in the back. In fact, we were placed like before. If you guys remember the the float that was new this year in which people were like the Christmas presents we were placed before them now unfortunately well well you guys are gonna see later why we had to change our places but anyway as we were walking this balloon is heavy you guys and it felt like it was 30 something pounds but it wasn't bad it wasn't something to complain about and at the same time trying to dodge horse crap which was almost everywhere. I think the people on the right side of the balloon got it a lot more than 
the my side, which I was on, I was on the left side. People still use horses in parade. Like, come on. This is like 2017. Are they gonna still be there like 10 years from now? I don't know. For like the next 30 minutes of walking, he told us to wind up this time about five times. And I did that. And at the same time, what was happening with my shoe, my shoe was starting to untie. So I told my captain, hey, captain, I was wondering if he can hold this bone for me because my sneakers are starting to untie. She said, okay, I'm going to help you. And at the same time, I was trying to keep up because, you know, you can't stop. There's no way you can stop unless there's performances and people stop to do their performances and then everything else in the back stops temporarily. So it came a point in time where the wind was blowing. I don't know where this wind came from, you guys. This wind was strong. And this this balloon, is, even though it was like one of the smallest balloons, that thing was going, going towards the left. It's coming. It's, it's, this, this thing is dragging. I felt the thing going to the left. And I was trying to hold down my balloon and just hold it down with all my strength. And... Yeah, the first time it happened, it grazed the tree. And before I knew it, the next, the, the candy cane drifted again to the left. And it popped. And I was like, what? How did this happen? Like, I listened to instructions. And I was so shocked. I was, I was tearing up a little bit. 6.54, new video this morning uh, as winds blew a balloon right into a tree at the mm. Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. The I knew it was going to be there. Popped when it hit a branch. Around 10.30 yesterday morning on the Upper West Side, thankfully the candy cane was a lot smaller than the parade's signature giant balloon. I know, right? And nobody was hurt. No, Thank weird. God. So anyway, after it popped, we had to reel it in. And then, you know, and then the people... I don't know who these people are. I think they're police officers. They came and take away the balloon and stuff like that. So, and I was like, "You guys, they, how does this happen? You know what I'm saying and stuff like that." And the black lady was like, "That's why I don't hold no balloons." And I, you see, I don't blame her. So when I asked my captain, she said to me, "You know, I think that balloon was a little too high. One and number two, it was the wind." After that, I thought it was over and that we weren't going to go in any further. And then people just started cheering us on and said, Candy cane, candy cane, candy. And the kids, oh my gosh. They were cheering us on and they were telling us, you know, it's okay, you know, you should continue the parade without the balloon. When the banner was coming up for Santa Claus, somebody thought that, okay, Let's get in back the, in the parade and stuff like that. I think our captain suggested that. And then we got back into the parade. Guess who was not nowhere to be found? The pilot. Like he felt so bad about what happened. It's like he couldn't, he wasn't going to be there. We walked on and waved and everybody cheered us on. <laughs> a white man was next to me was making a joke and saying, you know, they're cheering us on. When they started cheering us like crazy, they're cheering us on. But really, I knew they were cheering on for Santa that was right behind us. We even passed a guy later on that said, you know, what happened to your balloon? And then I told him it popped. And he said, oh, that's okay. That whole experience was so surreal, you guys. And the best part of the parade was when the streamers and confetti started coming down from the air. And then I heard on the other side and I'll, and then just things just start falling down from the, s the sky and raining down on us it was so cool oh my gosh like I've always wanted to walk through it and I finally got a chance to do it even when we came back from the march like there were some people that said you know sorry about your balloon but do you know what that white man that I spoke to earlier said he said you know because our balloon deflated first, we don't have to deflate it because it's already deflated. 
when you go all the way down to the end of the root, you have to deflate the balloon and everybody has to stay there until it's completely deflated. I'm quite sure the people who had Olaf as a balloon, they were already back and stuff like that. So After that, I put away my hat into the bin. I don't know why they would throw away stuff like that. They had like a bin where it says dirty hats and dirty gloves. For what? I felt like I could have saved that hat as a souvenir. As after I gave up my costume and stuff like that, I decided to go for my free gift. And I'm going to show you guys right now the free gift. Thanksgiving Day Parade and a button. And this was on my costume. If it's not, if it didn't show up in the picture that I posted in the video, then it's there somewhere. Although it should have appeared because it appeared on the side of my costume. Like maybe either here or here, I can't remember. After that, came home, waited till my mom finished cooking. I asked if there was anything else for me to do and she said no. She did most of the baking. She even did the biscuits and I want to do the biscuits. And I heard my sister say that she messed, messed up the biscuits. <laughs> She messed up the crescents. So there wasn't much I could do besides washing dishes, washing forks and spoons, and finding bowls to store like corn and stuff like that. <coughs> By the way, I haven't showed exactly what my mom made for Thanksgiving. So she made croissants, Pillsbury croissants. She did corn. She did. Um, cranberry, she had sweet potatoes, she had baked potatoes, although I violently protested, I'm just kidding, <laughs> I protested that there should be mashed potatoes, instead of baked potatoes with that garlic and whatever their seasoning, and she said, no, I don't want to do it my way, and then I said, okay, 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 have it your way, anyway, she did ribs, she did macaroni and cheese, she did greens, I think kale and mustard, because kale I think is the bitter greens, or is it the mustard, I can't remember, I think it's kale. So she thought that mixing kale and mustard together would cancel out the bitterness and have the sweetness to it. She did turkey, and she also did chicken, and for the most part, and also cook up, she also did cook up, which is basically... If you guys never, if you guys never heard of that term before, it's brown rice with some what kind of beans? I think it's black beans. And I think she puts, she sometimes put coconut milk in it. It depends on her taste. I'm gonna show the clip of Thanksgiving Day. So here you go. After about six hours of waiting. Getting close to Thanksgiving dinner. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, move, slip over, slip over. You get up. Thank you for what, what they give you. Mm. 
You're thankful for what? I think for what they give you. What they give you? Yes. Like the food? Yes. Oh, all right. What are you thankful for? Everybody. What are you thankful for? Thankful for God giving me this whole life. And I'm thankful for like a place where I can stay. And, you know, some people, when they, you know, get a certain age, they kick out their house. They have to be on their own and fend for themselves, so I'm very thankful I'm still living here, even though, you know, I'm still working my way up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the most important thing. Like, okay. Okay. It's Bobby's turn! I'm telling God that, you know, that John is here to celebrate the with his family. today God give you thanks for another day guidance and protection and I want to bless the cook the person who prepared the food the time they spend and let me eat Amen. Jamie who was on this? I don't know who this man is disgusting <laughs> <laughs> you see him, you know? Oh, yes. I'm licking all his fingers. I'm watching her. <laughs> this food makes sure that the food comes around and it's not like this. <laughs> and boxing it. So it's like everything is like in, in order. Yes. And that is the end, you guys. Thanks for watching. I had an amazing time being in the parade first time. I wish my English teacher was there, who also went to the same school as my captain, because it would have been amazing she was there, but anyway, at least she didn't have to worry about being part of the team with a pop balloon, because she said to me, the Sunday of that week of Thanksgiving, she told me that she was operating a balloon, she was one of the handlers for the wiggle worm, and it popped, and... For, for that for that to happen again, if she was there, I think she would have felt bad again. I don't know if we're going to be put on with the candy cane again. And, yeah. I think the candy cane's design is different because it has the green lines instead of the reds. I think last year they had, like, red lines all over, but this year they had red and green. So it would have been interesting if that balloon just went down the the blocks and showed off its new design but anyway mash the subscribe button if you like this video mash the like button and share with your friends also i wanted to share another favorite part of the parade when the balloons were spinning in like in place 
and we spun around in place even though we didn't have our balloons and I thought that was fun and even though we weren't shown in the parade at least I found some a video online that showed us in the parade so at least I have that as evidence so take care God bless and bye bye it's amazing it's amazing how like in one day you feel like you're famous but by the time you take off your <laughs> by the time you take off your costume you're just an ordinary person in the crowd anyway short-lived but I would love to do it again for years to come.